What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to our 2024 Gaming Prediction Galaxy Review. Today it's time for us to look into the future, and with 2023 being officially over and being considered one of the best and worst gaming years of all time, it's up to us not only to reflect on the past, but also to see into the future and, and hopefully be the fortune tellers of this coming year. And before we jump into the video, if you like this type of content, whether it's gaming content, opinion pieces, reviews, news updates, and live streams, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Now, before we get into the future, I think it's important for us to reflect upon the past. And last year, we have kind of have given us a kind of few looks at some possible horrible bold takes or some hot takes that we've had over the year. And, and now it's time to sort of pay the tab. We each had our own opinions throughout the year about a kind of wide array of games and topics. So which of us had the worst takes of the year? Well, I'll start with mine. My worst take of the year has to be where I said the blasphemy that Hogwarts Legacy was going to be a hover, a basically overhyped mess and a Garbo style of game. Last year, most of the trailers to this point made this game feel as if it was going to be a kind of one of those titles where you smash a bunch of buttons and then just pretend to be a wizard and, you know, hopefully go find some cool stuff. But I was honestly just completely wrong. I played Hogwarts Legacy. I made an entire review of the game, so you can go check that out uh, in the description below. But I got to say, the, so the story was pretty solid. It was a lot of fun. It, they actually had a lot of great callbacks to the movies and the books. So if you're a fan of any of those things, then you probably will enjoy it. And sure, the combat is pretty simple, but at the end of the day, I enjoy the fact that you can go and do this wide array of side missions and main story quests and learn a bunch of different spells that you can use against many different types of enemies. And I honestly think the fact that it was one of the highest selling games of the year just almost proved me instantly wrong. And I mean, Playing it for the first time, I, I I just enjoyed it. I was enjoying it since day one. I, I kind of like the the kind of crazy route you can go, and I like the fact that you can kind of pick your own house and just ride with it. And they kind of included a lot of, like, I guess you would say lore elements of Harry Potter that not really a lot of people knew if you were, never really read the books. They actually have some really cool elements that they dropped there. So Hogwarts Legacy should have won some sort of reward at the Game Awards. But it was definitely fun, and it was definitely one of my worst hot takes of the year. So I'm going to go with Hockey next. What is a hot take you had that you kind of wish that you could not have made back in 2023? Yeah, I know you guys know what I'm going to say. And it's it's the big uh, the big, big one, the Redfall. Uh, I was all over this game when, when it was, was going to be coming out, and I was so hyped. You know, it was going to be a new experience. Um, you know, the developers had, had said it was going to be, a, you know, a, a fun gaming experience. And man, when it came out, um, it was just absolute trash. The just the the whole movement gunplay and the gunplay was probably the best part. But, um, you know, the movement, just how empty the map was. It was just so bad all around. Um, and I was one of the, you know, one out of us three, I think I was probably the most hyped for that game. And um, it really hurt when it came out and it was just absolutely nothing. And there was other other games as well that, that I thought was going to be very, very, you know, fun and unique, like Payday 3, you know, my first Payday experience. Uh, me and my brother try to still play it and it is just bare bones, you know, barely playable. But I would probably say those two games, but Redfall definitely being the, uh, the big one there that I thought was going to be amazing and I was hyping it up. Uh, as much as the developers were, and uh, it was just real, real bad. But well, Kill, what's a hot take that you had that you kind of just kind of cringe or, you know, you just yeah. kind of look away? Yeah, probably my worst take has to be Lords of the Fallen being the best Souls-like game of 2023, which uh, it was not the case. When it came out, played it on the Xbox Series X, and it had terrible performance issues. It had performance problems on PC and PS5 when I did my review on it as well. And I thought this had the highest potential to be kind of a ancestor for the Dark Souls series. And you can make an argument, it wasn't even in the top three best Souls-like games of last year with Lies of P being better, Remnant 2 being better. And you might even be able to make the case about Wolong uh, being better um, overall, at least performance-wise. Now, there was aspects of Lords of Fallen that was really solid. But man, me and Mars did some co-op on that game. I did a uh, review on that game as well, and it was an absolute disaster. Uh, graphics look like back, uh, you know, a, a full console age um, previously. And it just, some elements are cool, but boy, it needed so much work at release. Yeah, I mean, when I'm playing 
playing a lot of these games that there's sometimes we kind of look back and be like damn i i wish i was not as uh not as critical as some of the even just the trailers because sometimes trailers don't really do the game justice itself but then sometimes you it's the opposite sometimes you look at something like you know like redfall and you're like damn you know this is this could be possibly a very interesting game and then then the product you get is complete trash so we look at the past reflect and we learn we get better but now it's time for us to look into the future and one of the first things i want us to think about is what is your biggest kind of i'm not going to say hot take but your biggest prediction when it comes to gaming news going forward meaning it could be a release it could be plenty of different news topics along the way but i'll start with mine and this is a very bold take but the next halo game will be announced at the summer's game conference now this will be announced as a next halo project that has been worked on by both three for three and certain infinity made in the unreal engine and there has been seen a several of new hires that have been done by 343 whether it was the art direction or the narrative teams along with news that certain infinity has been confirming in additions to a lot of unreal engine products or uh, or assets that have been now added into their project this large project that they've been apparently working on so many are speculating that this is the this is the next multiplayer experience that is going to encompass all the games and what part of my one of my future videos I'm making is kind of my predictions for Halo in the future. So I'm not going to get too much away, but it seems as if this looks like it's going to be kind of a massive project between being the next Halo experience that encompasses not just Halo Infinite's gameplay, but kind of brings in a lot of the old Halo concepts that were back in the original titles where, you know, uh, Max Overman was one of the kind of lead multiplayer directors during the Halo 2 and 3 eras. So I feel like having that on board with 3 for 3, I have a feeling that it's going to be arriving in 2025 and that this summer they're going to announce that Halo whatever, Halo or 7 is going to be dropping in fall of 2025. And my prediction is this summer we're going to get an announcement. It's going to be a cinematic trailer. Nothing too crazy. It's just going to say Halo 7 or Halo Infinite 2 or Halo halo multiverse I, I don't know halo forever i don't know what the hell it's gonna call but might be something cheesy along those lines as long as Pyro shriver is not involved and i'm okay with it um angelo kill what is a gaming i guess you say gaming hot take or a gaming prediction you have for this year of 2024 so i have two and the first one is the switch 2 which has been rumored to be coming out this year we even have ai predictions coming out in September of this year, but I'm not going to give you a date, but I do think it comes out in the fall of 2024. And the big question Nintendo is going to answer is what is the launch title that comes out with this Switch 2? A lot of people are pointing to Metroid Prime 4 as the game that comes out, but I have another surprise and I think Nintendo is going to drop it on us um, closer in the summer as well. And that is going to be the new 3D Mario game is going to be coming out this fall. It has been seven years since we've seen a 3D Mario game, Mario Odyssey, and we did a um, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, people saying, wait, that came out last year, but that was supposedly done by business insiders from gaming that by it was by Mario's C team on Super Mario Bros. Wonder. So what is the A team working on? They have to be coming out soon. Again, 2017 is when Breath of the Wild came out. So them and Tears of the Kingdom have been working on a similar cycle. Tears of the Kingdom came out last year. Does the... <laughs> The Mario game come out this year I think it does and that's going to be the big surprise game for Switch 2 and the second one my fellow Kingdom Hearts fans I think we're going to get a Kingdom Hearts 4 release date of 2025 the new game Missing Links comes out for mobile and I think it's a perfect time to transition to the new installment for Kingdom Hearts Final Fantasy 16 came out last year Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is this year the mobile games coming out for Kingdom Hearts it is time for Kingdom Hearts to make its return with a 2025 release date I mean, that would be pretty hyped if Kingdom Hearts 4 finally is uh, breaking the mold and, and not being 10 years. Like, I guess Square Enix is finally ramping up their production. Oh, six. Yeah, not almost. Ten. We'll get to not six ten. to seven. Not 10, but six. So, I mean, that would be pretty great. Uh, Haki, what is your prediction here? Yeah, so I got uh, three to have to deal with uh, Elden Ring and one I have to deal with Call of Duty. I'll, I'll do the Call of Duty one first because I, I don't think this is ever going to happen. Or, you know, I'm hoping it does, but I think Sledgehammer gets moved off uh, of Call of Duty. Um, just let Treyarch and Infinity War 
uh, or do their thing. Um, Sledgehammer has been kind of weak, the, the weakest link, I think. Um, and if they're going to keep going every other year, like I said, have Treyarch, have Infinity Ward kind of be the, the lead of, of those games. So I'm hoping Sledgehammer gets dropped out of Call of Duty and, and put on something else. Uh, and then I have two for Elden Ring. Um, you know, the, the rumored DLC uh, is going to be a, a big one. And what I'm thinking is, there's actually going to be two DLCs, and that's kind of been a rumor as well, but I think we're going to have one DLC drop in either uh, March or April, whether it be a surprise drop. I think that one's going to be the big one. Um, and I think we're actually going to get a smaller one dropped uh, before the summer ends, maybe around September, October, maybe a little bit after the summer. And then the other uh, you know, prediction that I have is I think that in the game, hopefully this isn't any spoilers, but Mikola, I think, is going to bring back Melania, and we're going to have to fight both of them at once in an epic battle to not get our cheeks clapped by the brother-sister duo. So we're going to have to see there. I think that would be pretty hilarious. I I would love that to see the, uh, the, I would love to see the, uh, the, what was the name of the character? Let, take, let me, uh, one, one of you won her. Well, I've got the guy's yeah, name. Let me, solo her. Her. let me solo her. Yeah. I would love to see, let me solo her. Take <laughs> on both of them at the same yeah, time. Let me, you got to uh, change his name. Let me solo them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be pretty epic to watch, but, with that being said, we also have to make our way too early predictions. And what I like to say for this is basically something that we start now. I know the Game Awards just happened roughly maybe a month and a half ago. I mean, in November is really when it happened. So now when we think about the way too early predictions. Let's pick our game of the years now and see. Hopefully we are right on the money. And I'll start with mine first. I mean, I'm not saying this because, you know, I've been I've been rooting for kind of this game to kind of be emergence as a as a as a top tier IEP out there because I played the first one and I thought it was one of the most surreal experiences because of the way that the audio design was so ramped up but I'm thinking that Hellblade 2 makes the emergence as a top tier IP because now with the kind of excitement around what the game is doing and, and looking how damn good it looked when it when they showed off the Unreal Engine kind of footage of the game and, and so far all the trailers show that kind of craziness that's still embedded with the game and now you're going to have the funding and kind of the stardom that goes along with it not saying that like games that were backed by the companies like microsoft or weren't you know even if there are back doesn't mean they're always successful because look at starfield but now you're having a game that was kind of flying under the radar for a long time and i think hellblade 2 has shown that they have the art they have the look of it they have the the combat feel what it seems like they have all these things going well i think that hellblade 2 is going to be that if it releases well then i think it will be a game of the year contender i think i'm going to call it for game of the year when my earth way too early prediction the only other game to me that kind of feels like right that spot is final fantasy 7 rebirth because of the the hype and the, the excitement behind it because it's a final fantasy game and final fantasy 7 remake was was pretty good I, I'm still salty at the fact that Square Enix is, is stealing money from us, making this a three-parter then versus a two-parter. But I'll put that saltiness behind, and, and when the game does release, I will enjoy it to its fullest extent anyway. Um, but I'm, I'm going to still kind of call them out on their BS. But I'm going to go with Hellblade, dude. I think that's going to be my prediction for game or way too early game of the year. Uh, but Hockey, what is your prediction for way too early game of the year? Yeah, so this is you know probably going to be another hot, steamy take that I, that's probably going to get you know, battered down. But um, I, I started playing the demo here and I think Prince of Persia might take the game of the year. And now, again, there's there's a lot of games that, that are gonna come out like Avowed and, and a few other games, Tekken 8, that are probably gonna, you know, top that. But what I've played so far is, is very fun, just in the demo. Um, and, you know, it brings back memories as well. So I think Prince of Persia, if not game of the year, is definitely gonna get nominated for game of the year. Um, and like I said, I've been playing the demo, having fun, and I'm going to be putting a review out when the actual game comes out. And I think, as far as I know, you know, as, as far as the feelings that I have, I think the game is going to be very interesting and it's going to surprise a lot of people. And for the people that are for the, uh, you know, the gaming uh, community that's gotten the, you know, early access, everything that we've seen so far has been super positive. So, you know, we're going to see, but I'm very excited for that game. Yeah, and Jello Kill, what's your way too early prediction for game of the year? Well, if, if my other prediction went through, which is this new 3D Mario game, whether it's Odyssey 2 or a new 3D uh, whatever installment for Mario, I think that will win Game of the Year this year. But 
if I am incorrect about that 3D Mario game, then I will go with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I felt like the first Final Fantasy VII remake was kind of their jump start um, on how they can transition to this. You know, they were testing some things out. It was a semi-open world game. This is a game that's going to be around 100 hours long. I feel like this is the big moment for Final Fantasy. They, they were one of the finalists last time when the remake first came out. Did not win. I feel like this is the opportunity to win. But I'm going to one-up you guys. I'm not only just going to give you the game of the year, I'm also going to give you the contenders as well. So you got... If the Mario game comes out, that one wins. Final Fantasy VII, Metroid Prime 4, Hellblade 2, Dragon Dome, uh, Dogma 2, and a surprise one, whether it's Prince of Persia or Stellar Blade, is going to make its way into that Game of the Year contender. So I'm going to give you a huge, huge prediction. If I get four of them right, I think I'm a genius. I mean, I mean that would be pretty epic if you were able to get the contenders, too. I mean... I'm looking at 2024. There's a lot of solid games out, but I mean, it's it's going to be tough to see because there's a lot of games that haven't been announced yet. I mean, that's kind of the thing that we're waiting to see. But at the same time, way too early game of the year predictions. We also have to make our way too early overhyped games or over, I guess you would rated. say, just under, under, yeah. overrated uh, overall. So I'm going to start with mine. And I really don't, I really hope this game lands because I'm really, I, I've been waiting to see how this game is going to be. But I'm real nervous about it. I'm thinking Avowed is the one that I'm really scared about because we still haven't had a confirmed release date yet, but I have this feeling that the game is not going to be the Skyrim form of game that we all wanted to see, and it's going to be more cartoonish compared to the real dark and mystical feel that we had seen in that first trailer that was dropped. I know a lot of people are excited about this game, and my, and my hope is that it is good, but apparently releasing this year, it, it kind of doesn't hasn't really given me much to go with so far, and I know we had one trailer and it was and there's no multiplayer component now so now it feels like they're kind of cutting things away and when you start doing that with no real you know destination in sight it kind of feels like you're going to lose a lot of what people were excited about and if i'm wrong if it, if the vowed is going to be a great game the other one i had on my list was skull and bones and i think that when i'm looking at skull and bones it's really hard to get a good pirate game and it's hard to match the level of of, ex of excitement and fun that Assassin's Creed Black uh, Black Flag had because every other prior game I played has failed. Whether it was Sea of Thieves had some fun moments together, but overall it fails to me because there's not enough for there to keep me around for a long period of time. It, other pirate games kind of just are not it, right? And I feel like that pirate theme that we've been itching for for a long time has kind of all fallen flat. So. I think that Skull and Bones is probably the second best option, but I'm really nervous about Avowed. I hope it's a good game, but we'll find out. But Frank, what is your way too early overrated prediction? Yeah, I have two as well, and Avowed is one of them on my list, and, and kind of uh, Mars made a lot of big points there. And the first time we saw Avowed, it was this dark, um, kind of mythical feel to it, and now it's kind of changed into a little bit more of a cartooner. So you saw a change in art design. Then we get news um, that they've cut out the multiplayer component. Now, these are just... They're not huge deals by themselves, but now you see change art design, change in the concept that it was multiplayer. And then it was supposed to come out last year and got delayed a full year. So this feels like a little bit of development issues going on in the background now. How deep did they get and can they change it from that developer direct from xbox is going to be so big for this avowed is supposed to be one of the games being showcased on it um here in january and i think that could change some minds but it could also raise more questions and the second one to me uh i don't know if you guys realize concord is coming out this year which is a first person sci-fi shooter for playstation and the only time we saw it was last year's showcase where they showed them flying in space and a sandwich right on the on the ed, on the kind of tabletop um in a ship that's all we saw from concord and now in this past uh, week or two sony has put out a preview video or trailer of games coming out from january to june and concord was on it and that's the only thing we know about the sandwich and that it's a first person shooter multiplayer game. We know nothing else about this and it's supposed to be coming out in the first half of this year. Those are some scary thoughts and we don't even know what kind of game this is. Which one's of, one of two things can happen. This is gonna get delayed or this feels like a bare bones type of multiplayer game that has to get added along the time. But we don't even know anything about it and this raises red flags. Yeah, I can uh, definitely agree with you. I, I almost forgot about Concord as a game 
uh, and, and I saw a news thing. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot that was even at PlayStation Showcase that long time ago. But, Aki, what is your way too early overhyped game or overrated game? Yeah, so I might just fail uh, throughout this whole thing here. Um, I might get some hate, you know, from the fans or some, you know, uh, surprise you guys here. Um, I'm going to, and I hope to God this doesn't happen, but I'm going to go with Star Wars Outlaws. So if if this game, they're promising a lot with this game. All right, they really are. And I really hope that it comes out and everything they promise, you know, uh, is there and you can do everything that they say that you can do and it runs good and it doesn't have a ton of bugs. But when I look at like, you know, the the last couple movies that came out and, you know, the, the last Star Wars video game that came out, which had problems at launch and it had problems, you know, kind of throughout, it really gets me nervous uh, for Star Wars Outlaw. Now, um, you know, it is Ubisoft, right, that, that's coming out with this game. And, um, you know, they've they've had some hiccups in the last few years as well. So, um, hey, I, Prince I'm of really, Persia, man. They turned yeah. it around. Yeah, exactly. I know. So I, I, that's the other thing. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm feeling good about Prince of Persia right now. But, uh, you know, the everything that I've seen Star Wars in the last couple of years, other than like the Mandalorian, you know, and those spinoff TV shows have kind of been a little sketchy for me. So I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I really hope that, um, you know, they pull through and, and I really hope that I'm wrong here. But um, as of right now, I'm, I'm going to put Star Wars Outlaws as a, an overrated game. Yeah. And so with that being said, let's jump into our final segment, which is our New Year's resolution for gaming. And this is kind of the biggest thing you want gaming to improve on for this coming year. And I'll start with mine. One of the biggest fads I've been slamming the table on that I've been leading the movement against this entire time was the overuse of creating remakes instead of just making new IPs or sequels. Whether it was a remake of Last of Us 1 and 2, separating each other from roughly six months apart, Resident Evil 4 remake and Dead Space remake, hell, even rumors of a Gears of War Marcus Phoenix collection. But there's one thing of all these updates that are shared, and in that they all should be roughly $20 to $40 releases, but because they're essentially updates for most of them, but they're all, all whopping $70 a pop. And I think this is kind of like the ridiculous part of it where I'm looking for the future of this year. And I know that there's already been a lot of kind of setting up a lot of remakes already coming out, but I'm really hoping that we start to see a lot more new IPs or at least give me some sequels along with these news of remakes, because I feel like we're missing out on what the basic idea of what gaming is that we get new ideas or expansions of stories that were already in place and so when i made my mars man awards and i gave out the sleeping uh, sleeping behind the wheel award to both naughty dog and to the coalition i don't want to hear about remakes from these two companies i want to hear about new ips whether it's the last of us part three or a gear six i want to hear something that you're doing other than taking old games and just making them look better for the future because anybody can do that. If you give us Marsman crew the tools, I'm sure that we could recreate a last of us scene and just have one of us getting beaten down by one of by, by somebody else. Oh, acting like Joel in it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't, don't spoil it. I, I know. Just because, you know, the game came out years ago and we already know the whole story anyway. Um, but the whole whole fact is, is just, I, we got to see something. Right? And I feel like that should be something to be looked forward to. 2024 but hockey what is your new year's resolution for gaming yeah so i've been getting tired of the of the cookie cutter uh games that have been coming out i've been a big uh you know fan of, of first person shooters i've been getting tired of the call of duties i'm getting tired of the battlefields and, and even at some point i was getting tired of halo infinite because it was kind of bare bones but they've kind of you know updated the game and, and made it like a almost like a new game so you know, what I want to see is I want to see some unique and new gaming experiences. I've been opening up my, um, you know, my mind to other video games, which has helped me. But I definitely want to see these bigger developers, um, you know, come up with new ideas. Um, and I don't want them to give up on, on their ideas as well. Like, you know, something like Minecraft Legends, they, you know, no longer coming out with updates. You know, it seemed like they were giving up on an idea that seemed all right. You know, I mean, we played it. We had fun. It wasn't the greatest game, but, um, you know, I, I want to see unique new gaming experiences. I don't want companies to give up. Um, you know, I, I want to see a game 
kind of evolve over time almost into something you know new if, if that is even possible start with a great game and update it to the point where you know a year or two later um, I feel like I'm almost playing you know something new and, and having a new experience within that game um, you know if 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 I were to have a another Call of Duty come out, and I've said this, and I know how, how outlandish this sounds, but give me something that I've never seen before from Call of Duty. Like, give me like Revolutionary War or Civil War, where I'm like fighting people with bayonets and I'm on horses and stuff like that. You know, like give me. I need something brand new if I'm going to play Call of Duty for more than you know two months. Yeah, go a little bit new. Make it make it a little fresh. I don't know about Cold yeah. War. Maybe maybe Is we'll it go just into first person or gaming overall. Uh, this is just gaming overall, but I was just just for Call of Duty. Like I, I feel like it'd be hilarious to be like back in the Civil War or Revolutionary War times. I, but in general, I, I just want new experiences, and you know, I don't want developers giving up on ideas. You know, if it doesn't work right away, give me some updates and and make a make a unique experience that that can evolve over time. Yeah, I, I can feel that. And Jelly Kill, what is your New Year's resolution? Yeah, mine's not towards the gaming industry as a whole, um, even though there is some things that we could. But I'm going to just talk about one game, and that's NCAA 2024. And this is a longtime game back. It's been over 10 years since the last NCAA football game uh, made by EA. And that's when I was kind of enthralled in the sports games because um, I really love the college football stuff. I love the college football atmosphere. And NCAA is supposed to be making its return this year. And my New Year's resolution is to hope that EA, for once, puts the effort and time into this football game that they do not show with Madden. And my big fear for all the football fans out there, especially the ones looking at nostalgia, is that this is going to be a Madden cocoon painted over uh, with this NCAA makeup all over it. And it's going to be bare bones recruiting same exact thing you see in Madden, um, and it's just not going to capture the magic that we once loved of NCAA. So my prayers are to EA to please give us a very good NCAA football game. Make it the best work you've done, but I have strong doubts. And with that being said, I want to ask the audience here, what are your predictions for 2024? Are you excited for any possible news coming out? Are you excited for any games releasing in this year? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Mars Band signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>